A great way to determine the intrinsic value of a stock is the dividend discount model. In this video, I'll be guiding you through the entire process on step-by-step -step how to create a dividend discount model from scratch. If you want access to this model and all other models that I use in my videos, you can check in the description for my Patreon link and you can get access to all models I use and more. Anyways, getting that out of the way, let's open a new empty sheet and start building. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to look at the historical dividend data of the company that we're going to analyze. In this case, we're going to analyze Johnson & Johnson. But what we want to start off with, we want to insert our year, our dividend payout, since we're going to do a discounted dividend. What a discounted dividend means is we're going to uh, value the company based on all the future dividends that they will pay out or that we're expecting them to pay out. So we want to insert the dividend payout, the yearly dividends, dividends, and then a the growth because we want to start by projecting an expected growth rate. And what we're going to do that with is by looking at the growth rate in the past. So in this case, we want 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. And we're going to outline this to the middle. What we then want to do is we want to insert the data of the dividend payouts that Johnson & Johnson has done in the past. In this case, I use uh, Nasdaq.com slash uh, dividend history. I'll leave it in the description what the uh, website I use. And we can see here that Johnson & Johnson in last year has paid out $1.13 a share. Then we want to go and insert that here. And we want to, of course, make it dollars. And we want to outline it to the middle. So this was the last payment. $1.06 was the year before. And then $1.01. And the year before that, uh, 95 cents. And the year before that one was 90 cents. So now we've got the historical data of the dividend payouts of Johnson & Johnson. We want to copy the... Uh, with this button you can copy the... Um, with this button you can copy the makeup of this cell. So let's do that. And now we've got our dividend payouts. What we then want to do is we want to make them the yearly dividends. What we do, of course they pay out quarterly, so it's four times a year. What we then want to do is is, referring to this cell, which is G3 times four very simple and now you get the yearly dividend payouts and we want to line this out to the middle and then we can drag it all the way to the left then we've got our yearly dividend payouts of johnson johnson of the past five years what we don't want to do is we want to calculate what the growth between them was how we do that we want to do the formula is d4 divided by c4 minus one then we get this and we want to make it a, a a percentage format which we do with this button and now we get the percentage growth of this year and also this one we can drag all the way to the right and then we've got the growth rate and dividend payouts for johnson johnson what we're then gonna uh, gonna do is we want to look what was the average growth over the past five years we just want to fill in average growth here and then we want to use the function average and drag it on these for sales. And then we can see the average growth rate of Johnson Johnson in their dividends was almost 6%. It was 5.86% in this case. What we would then want to do is we want to do a expected growth rate. It's an expected growth and we want to use a discount rate. Because now we're in the next stage of our analysis where we want to do an expectation and we want to use a discount rate to discount the future dividend payouts. Because of course the, the time value of money, money is worth less in the future. So how we do the expected growth rate, this is just going to be something that we want to fill in ourselves. So I'm not going to, let's just fill in four for now and we want to make it a percentage and line it out to the middle again and fill it in again and then we get 4%. And for Johnson & Johnson, I always use a discount rate of 8% in this case. I want to make a percentage and fill in 8%. Then we've got our projection ready and we've got our discount rate. Now we're going to do the calculation to determine the intrinsic value of the company. So let's just fill in intrinsic value. And then we're going to do a bit more complicated uh, formula. What we want to do is is sum. And then we want to add the growth rate. Uh, no, first, what we want to do is we want to refer to the last dividend payout. So the last yearly dividend, which in this case is G4. 
And then we want to multiply by the growth rate. How we do that is 1 plus the growth rate. So our expected growth rate in this case was 4%. That's a part of the growth rate done for us. Now we want to discount this growth rate. So we do divided by, so a slash. And then we want to refer to the discount rate minus the expected growth rate. And then you want to close the bracket again. That's our entire uh, formula. And now we've got the intrinsic value on our based on our uh, expectations of Johnson & Johnson, which is $117.52. Under this, you can, uh, for example, fill in the current price, current price, the upside in dollars, and the upside in percentages. As we can see, the current price, in this case, I'm going to be using Yahoo Finance for the real-time price, and we can see it's $155.97. So let's fill that in, $155.97. Sorry, I forgot it already, $155.97. I want to make this dollars again and line this out to the middle. So we can see there's quite a difference, but this is just a broad estimate. Uh, we could make it 5.5% and you can see it change automatically. It's Instantly, it will be worth way more. So it's it's very sensitive, this analysis. Let's just leave it at 5% for now. What we want to do then is we want to calculate the upside. So what we do is the intrinsic value minus the current price. And we can see an upside of $2.23 in this case. And then in percentages, we want to do the exact same, but we want to use a formula, which is the intrinsic value divided by the current price minus one. We get this and we, of course, want to make it in percentages again. So in this case, we get a 1.43% upside and you've got your entire discounted dividend model done right now. And what you can do is you can make some, uh, you can do some makeup on it. So for example, the, your input fields, you can give it a color. Uh, say these are input fields. This is going to be, or these two rather are going to be input fields. And your current price is also going to be an input field. And you can do this with any company that has dividend payouts. And you can see that they, uh, you can just insert their dividend payouts of the past five years. You're going to do a projection on what you think based on the average growth over the past uh, uh, of the past five years rather uh, what the growth rate will be in the future and you want to apply discount rate uh, or you can use a, a weighted average cost of capital for the company that's something up to you and then you can un uh, insert your current price and that's where you get your entire formula and that's how you make a dividend discount model i hope you enjoyed the video if you want to see more of this content please subscribe and thanks for watching the video goodbye